What's up guys, Econ John here. In this video, we're gonna talk about the linear approximate almost ideal demand system. Let's go. So what is the linear approximate almost ideal demand system? So the linear approximate almost ideal demand system is, as the name says, a linear approximation of the almost ideal demand system. It's not really a variant on this uh, expenditure system, but it's rather a variant on the estimation of the budget shares. Recall that the budget shares in the almost ideal demand system is defined as the following, where, you know, this last term, right, this P term in our index of supernumerary income is given by our trans log price index. For the linear approximate almost ideal demand system, we swap that out and use the stone price index, which is an approximation for the trans log price index if the, our prices are highly collinear. This is defined as log p right which is our price index is equal to kappa naught plus the summation of all budget shares i times log pi right so notice that the coefficients on each one of these prices right gives us our budget share of that index so kappa naught could be interpreted as the cost of for an individual to subsist using an index based on the pig log model for the linear approximate almost ideal demand system, we estimate budget shares directly as opposed to estimating the underlying expenditure function, which we would normally do if we were appropriately estimating the almost ideal demand system. The reason why we estimate this is to circumvent issues of multicollinearity that could occur when we have our interaction term log PI and PJ. So that would end up just getting dropped out, right? in most softwares. I know at least in Stata that would happen. So I can go and see computationally uh, why you can end up with this. So just a last point, if I didn't emphasize it enough, the linear approximate almost ideal demand system is estimated exclusively through its budget shares. So this WI term, right? That is one equation, right? In our sure model and in our demand system. So the properties of the linear approximate almost ideal demand system is similar to the regular AIDS model with the properties one to four, right? Where P one to three is referred to as the adding up or budget balances condition. Uh, P three is referred to the fact that our demands are homogeneous of degree zero in prices, right? This differs from P two in our regular almost ideal demand system model. So check that out in my other video. Uh, P four is the Slutsky symmetry condition, right? Which basically means that are you know substitution terms right as in are going to be equivalent to each other and you know all these properties above exist based on construction but we're missing one property which is i guess most crucial uh for you know understanding this as a demand system and really as a cost function or a derivative from a cost function is that we need it the underlying cost function to be negative semi-definite and uh, since we're going and really estimating this directly, there's no real parametric way of going and checking this. Um, this property is necessary because it's a property of all cost functions and is necessary for underlying economic theory. Um, so what the hell a uh, AIDS model is really is just kind of a shot in the dark. I mean, we take a best guess, right? Because we're unable to go and estimate the almost ideal demand system. And it's for this reason, uh, there's opposition to the use of the linear approximate almost ideal demand system. So we have these properties and we have a reason why this is problematic is because we're unable to really check if you know our cost function is well-defined. So uh, for this last slide, uh, I just wanna go and point out some elasticities, right? They're calculated very similarly to the way that we calculate them in the AIDS model, right? The income elasticity for good I, right, is the same as we calculate in our regular almost ideal demand system model. So, you know, that's a plus. We save our time with our estimation. We were a lot looser with it, but we still have the same structural estimation for it. Um, and we have our uncompensated price elasticity, which is also very similar to it, but is also simpler, right? where this delta ij term is our Kronecker delta. So uh, this is our video on the linear approximate almost ideal demand system. I'll see you in another video. Take care.